Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about array lists in Java. So when we talk about array list, we are technically talking about a list. In the previous session, I covered in detail about the various implementation of list interface which were array list and link list. And in today's session, we'll be focusing only on the array list. I have opened the API documentation of uh, the array list class. So if we just scroll down, we will see a nice description which is provided by Java. And it broadly covers all the points which I described in the previous session, which were that an array list is basically an array based implementation of a list. It's an index based implementation. So you can access the elements based on their index position. You can directly access any element if you know its index. It accepts any kind of duplicates as well. And by default, it is not thread safe. If two threads are trying to access the same collection at the same time, or maybe trying to modify the collection, then you will get inconsistent behavior. So that was about the basic description of array list. There are, it provides a lot of interesting utility methods as well for adding elements, for adding multiple elements, for removing elements, for fetching an element from the array list. And we will cover those methods in detail in the demo. And with that, maybe let's switch to the demo. So for this, I have created a class which is called array list demo. It has a public static void main method and it has an array list example written inside it. So at line number 10, you see that there is an initialization happening for the array list. And this is how you basically initialize the array list. To start with, you write the interface name. You can obviously write array list as well here. Instead of list, you can write array list. That is absolutely acceptable. But the reason I have written list here is because it is a better practice, or I would say it is a best practice to always initialize the concrete implementations with the interface type. I'm making a very generic statement which is applicable to collections and at any other type of classes and objects you might be creating in your program. Always try to declare it with the type of interface and then define the concrete implementation on the right hand side. So the LHS or the left hand side will contain the interface declaration and the right hand side will contain the concrete implementation. The reason for this is that if tomorrow, if you have to change the representation of this array list to let's say a link list, then you don't need to do a lot of work because the link list is also a child of the list interface. So since list understands and knows about both of the classes, you can interchangeably use this reference to point to any of those implementations. That's why it is considered a best practice to basically uh, write the left hand side as the interface and the right hand side as the concrete implementation. That's the first bit of it. Second interesting thing you notice is this. So you see these expressions here and this basically encloses any kind of generics or class type. What are generics? We will cover this in detail in the upcoming sessions. For now what you can understand and what you should know that these are denoting a class type of which the objects will be stored inside this particular list. So once I say list of integer, it means that this particular list is only going to hold integer objects. If you try to insert a string object, or if you try to insert a character object, or if you try to insert a float object or any other kind of object, it will create an error. Because you remember in the very first lecture, we said that Java is strongly typed language. It has very strong checks for these kind of data type mismatch. So if that's why it will expect you to specify the object type here and whatever type you have specified here, that's the kind of objects which are going to be stored inside this list. I have been using these terms called classes and objects inter interchangeably, but for now what you can understand that this is a type. How we, how we write classes and how we write objects and how we create objects. Again, I will cover this in detail in the upcoming sessions. So we have specified the list interface and I'm saying that this particular variable should hold any list of integer type. Then on the right hand side, I'm specifying what type of list this array list is. And this array list will be an array list class type. And again, I have to specify the class type uh, 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 specifications. 
and then I'm specifying a size here. This is the size of the array list, the initial size of the array list. You can obviously write it without this as well. This is also a perfectly fine statement in Java. And in this case, the array list is going to be initialized with its default size. If you specify a value, then the array list will be initialized with only that size. It is also considered a best practice to always initialize the array list with a, some known initial value. Let's say if this array list is going to store only two elements and the default size is definitely way, way bigger than two elements, then you're going to waste a lot of memories. So that's why it is a best practice to specify, explicitly specify some sort of an initial size. This is also acceptable because it is automatically inferring the type from the declaration. You don't need to specify it again here. In fact, some of these modern IDEs will also show you a warning if you write it here. So the next thing I'm going to do is basically going to add some elements to this array list. So I've created an array list which should hold only integer values and it should hold to start with five values, but it will not complain if you try to add the sixth value. So for that, I have just written a small loop here. Let me just put curly braces around it for readability. So I'm saying int i equal to one, i should be less than or equal to five, i plus plus and i keep doing array list dot add so this add method is the method which is used to add elements to the array list so whenever you have to add an element to the array list remember you need to use the method add and then specify the actual element which is supposed to be added so i'm adding one two three four five in this array list one by one using this loop and then i am just printing the whole array list that's what i'm doing here after that to showcase another operation of this array list I'm removing an element. And if you have to remove an element from array list, just simply call array list dot remove and specify the index from which you want to remove the element. Remember, you need to specify the index. And as I said in the beginning, this is an array based implementation. So this is going to start from zero. So when I say remove the element at index three, technically it's the fourth element of the array list. After that, once we have removed the element, I'm again displaying the modified array list and then printing all the elements of the uh, array list one by one. And for uh, for fetching the element, if you see here, if you if you observe this particular for loop, I'm using a couple of more interesting methods of the array list. Let's understand those methods as well, and then I will run the program. So here you see that I'm saying int, uh, int i equal to zero, and then I'm saying i less than array list dot size. So if this array list has a capacity, initial capacity of storing five elements, and I've just added five elements to it, then the array list dot size will be five, but it says less than. So it will start from zero and run till i equal to four, because the moment i becomes five, five is not less than five, and it will come out of the loop. So basically I'm trying to start this loop where i, i's value starts from zero and goes till four. And here I'm calling another array list method, which is used to fetch an element from the array list. So whenever you have to get an element from the array list, just call dot get on the array list. So array list dot get, and I'm specifying the i value. So array list dot get of zero, get of one, get of two, get of three, and get of four. And that's technically the five elements which are stored in this array list. So let's run this program. So, and now let's observe the outputs here. Let me just bring the outputs down. Yeah. So at first I'm just printing the array list. So nothing, nothing. Uh, uh, I'm just adding the elements and printing the uh, complete array list. So if you want to just print the whole array list, just put that inside system dot out dot print array and the whole array list will be printed. That's line 17. Then I remove the element at index three. So if I traverse through this particular list, this is index zero, index one, index two and index three. So index three has an element which has a value four and I'm saying array list dot remove the element at index three. So this particular element should be removed from this particular list when I call the line 20. And then if I print the modified array list at line 24, I can see that four is gone now. It's only one, two, three, five. That's the remaining list. You also need to notice that whenever I call system dot out dot print ln with array list, I get this square brackets which is the representation of an array list. If you don't want that, you might not want that always, right? If you want to print this nicely without the square brackets, then you have to iterate over the array list. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm going from zero to array list dot size, 
and I'm doing get of 0, get of 1, get of 2, and get of 3. And that's how I get these values without 4. We can also write the same loop using for enhanced loop. So let's say if I write for int i colon array list and then inside it I can just say system dot out dot print ln i and if I comment this particular loop for for a moment and run this program I see the values one by one because it's ln so every output comes on on a new line but you can pretty much see the same output if I remove this and if I write it like this just adding an extra space it will look a bit more nice a bit more formatted like this so as you can see that we can get the pretty much the same output either using a classic for loop style which is a bit verbose or you can use an enhanced for loop which is a much simpler and shorter and uh, less verbose way of doing exactly the same thing you don't even need to call the array list dot get i but i the reason i put this example because i wanted to show you the get functionality as well so that's all we are going to talk about in this session in the next session we will be discussing about linked list which is the another implementation of the list interface. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be massively appreciated. And please do not forget to subscribe to Simply Code for more programming related videos. Thank you and we'll meet again in the next session.